And welcome to another exciting, fun filled, expeditious radio. <laughs> I'm gonna start all over again. All right, everybody, welcome to another exciting, hair raised, fun filled, expeditious episode of Radio Rama, where I show you how to work on radios, televisions, stereos, all the other good stuff from the 1930s through about the 1960s. And today we have a RCA Victor. I can't tell what that's supposed to be. 17. The model's missing because the paper tag is, is gone, but I've worked on this one a bunch, this particular model. I don't think it's important. They're, it's as common as it can be. It's got some notes on it. And notes on it. it says, they listen to me. It says, C-O-K Buzz works on various stations. Well, let's see what that means. Okay, indeed buzzes immediately that probably indicates there's definitely some bad electrolytic capacitors if not more that's all I need to hear the electrolytic capacitors are shot not all the way shot but about 99% shot so by default that means I should replace those electrolytic capacitors and also replace whatever else needs to be replaced in here probably all of the capacitors all the paper all the paper caps and especially the one that goes to chassis we'll need to replace that too so let's get this guy out of the cabinet and take a look inside to see what kind of story it has to tell either a it's been worked on in the past and probably has just a pair of replaced electrolytic capacitors b it's never been worked on and is completely virgin, which is my preference. C, someone worked on it and didn't know what they were doing and did something really messed up. Who knows what we'll find, but we're going to find out soon enough. Well, here is the story. My first guess was the correct one, which is someone has been in here and they replaced the electrolytic capacitors. Because you get all this this stuff like what, wagging around in the air, that would not be how they would do it at the factory. Because that would be stupid. I'm looking in here, and I'm kind of curious what era this might be. It, I thought it was immediate post-war. I think it's pre-World War II, at least pre-war. When I say that, pre-war for the United States, because it has a lot of late 30s, early 40s RCA components. These guys would call them a uh, deer turd capacitors. Their mica that's in molded rubber, they're usually okay. And then this is how a lot of pre-war RCAs were marked when it comes to their capacitors. It'd just be like this number here. Two tenths of a microfarad rated at 300 volts, and that's probably a part number. And the rest of them are marked that way. So again, I'm suspicious. I believe this is pre-war. Also got some traces of the awful, awful pre-war rubber wiring that shatters if you look at it if it's not you know shattered and it's relatively stable as far as it's not anywhere around something that's going to move it's okay you can leave it alone usually We've got kind of a decent sized speaker and we have six tubes so a little more a little more sensitive with that extra tube there instead of having a how many, how many since, how many, I guess it's got four different detector slash radio related reception tubes. Again, the, the label's missing off of it, but I was looking. Output tube is 35L6. 35Z5 is our rectifier. I think we're probably going to have a 12SQ7 and maybe two 12SK7s. I'm just curious, what is this guy? This one is 12SQ7. I bet this is going to be the 12... Yeah, that's the 12SK7. And this one's either going to be either 12SK7 or 12S... 
12SA7. Now we got the 12SK7 here. This is 12SA7 by default then. So yeah, just an extra 12SK7. And we have a two-row tuning condenser. Again, another mark that's just a little more of a sensitive set than your average. Um, it has multiple bands. I think it's got a police band on it, which is useless for today because they no longer use that band anywhere. Uh, but but the, let's the other thing we need to look for. We need to look for the grounding cap, which is the cap that goes to chassis ground. It's usually pretty easy to find because it'll be the one that goes to the metal. And I'm looking here. It's hard to tell, really. I'm going to have to look, pull up the schematic to, to double confirm. Yeah, but it should go to chassis ground, and I'm not seeing anything immediately, but it doesn't. It, it's, it's one of these caps. My guess would probably be it's either this one or that one, because I would not put it past RCA to put two tenths of a microfarad on the, the chassis. That's significant. That means you'd get jolted pretty bad if you were to touch that and ground at the same time. All right, the first thing we're going to do is replace the electrolytics. And according to this guy, there's a 50 and a 30 microfarad capacitor in there. So we'll just snip it out of there and replace it with two new electrolytic capacitors. And yeah, it's still hanging by a thread. Be gone, you! So here's a 47 microfarad cap and a 33 microfarad cap. That'll be just fine. And, you know, when it, when it has things like color codes on the old cap, like when this says red and, uh, what's the other one, green? Well, green is not as color fugitive. You can tell it's obviously green. So by default, that makes this, this red. This used to be red, but now it's kind of brown. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang the positives of each one of these to their respective locations. One here and one here somewhere. And then I'll just run a common negative to each one of them. And then they'll be joined. We can test the set and see if we have at least restored some level of basic operational ability. All right, here we go. We've got the uh, two electrolytics replaced. That'll probably make a drastic improvement in the performance. So let's go ahead and far it up. And again, I wouldn't trust any of the rest of the capacitors are in this thing. They're probably shot to smithereens. It's not buzzing anymore, though. That's already an improvement. Out into the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Visit Stick with Israel to your spot. Learn by. All right, it works good. We've got a dirty volume pot, and again, it should be pretty sensitive because it is a six-tube set. I think that's all the electronics I'm going to work on today. Uh, I already restored that guy today, and I had to install and light fixture in my wife's office and it got on my back all kinked out. So I think what I'm going to do now is maybe work on the case, do some wax job on it to clean it up because the Bakelite on it is in fact pretty good shape. No one's ever used, looks like no one's ever used harsh cleaners on it. So I'm going to sit in my rocking chair and polish away. Okay, well believe it or not this took about two hours. This is repeated applications of car new car wax, cleaning out all the little nooks and crannies. I'm not sure if this is shown for the video, but you start to get the burl effect of Bakelite. I'm not sure what the original intent was, maybe to make it look like wood or something, but when it came out of the factory, it definitely was very glossy, and you'd see a lot of more texture. So when it dulls, you don't see any of that, and the radio becomes more and more brown. Getting into some of these little nooks and crannies for the speaker was pretty difficult. I used Q-tips. And it just takes a lot of back and forth work. But if you're patient, you can kind of like tease out the original gloss and appearance of the set when it came from the factory. All right, well, as I said yesterday, I got the Bakelite cabinet all shined up. And, you know, the thing is, is that this is a real common model. They're not particularly valuable, but every once in a while, it's nice to take a real common one and just, you know, do it to the max to make it look as close as it possibly could have looked when it was new. We have a little bit of loss in the graphics that probably just fell off over time. It's okay. It's hard to notice. So now it's time to come over to 
the chassis and start working on it and I did identify what the grounding cap is it's this guy which is it's way too huge 0 0.2 2 tenths of a microfarad I'm going to replace it with this guy this isn't x2 y2 across the line capacitor rated at 0 0.01 microfarads that is going to get our current layer level down to the chassis <clears throat> to a safer level and there's been a lot of kind of ongoing discussions about chassis safety I've had a few people make some comments which is well you should put a polarized plug on it well the only problem with that is that yeah sure when you turn the set on if you have it in the correct position the chassis will be neutral you turn it off and you, you can you can check it out for yourself it goes in reverse and suddenly you'll have everything going in opposite and the chassis becomes hot or in this case it's not super hot it's got a floating ground but it'll reverse itself and you'll have 120 volts on the chassis so with that in mind <clears throat> if you want to reduce that chance no matter what position that cord is in to install one of these because that will essentially neutralize the chassis in both directions when I say neutralize I don't mean it, it takes the the voltage off of it you will still see you know 120 volts but the amount of current that can get to the user is going to be minimized greatly you might get a little bit of a tingle and I don't advise you touch the radio uh, even if you've installed the safety cap but it's not gonna you know be near as bad as having all of the current as in like there's no protection no capacitor between the other side of the AC line and chassis so it seems like we have, on top of that, this one, we have an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine additional capacitors. Probably about three, four different values. I'm starting to run out of caps. In fact, I meant to order some today and I forgot. Keep on forgetting. Anyway, we had, we had like literally a sprinkling of rain for the first time probably since December, and it is August, so it's been, let's see, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, eight or nine months. Meanwhile, the state is on fire. Um, in other parts of the state, it is so hot, and like I said, everything's on fire. It's creating this weird weather inversion where we just, we see haze and um, fog all day. It's also weirdly humid, which I'm not used to anymore. Um, anyway, enough of that. Back to the radio. And this will be, you know, what I, what I tend to do is replace capacitors in, in this way. Like I'll snip one end, install one side of the new cap in, and then snip the other, and then install the other cap, the other side of the new cap. That makes sense. Maybe I'll film a little bit of that since I haven't done that in a while. And some people ask me to please show what I'm doing versus just going, there, they're replaced, done. All right, so I'll show you a little bit about how I do my recapping. And everybody has their own little way of doing things, so just because I do it a certain way doesn't mean you have to do it the same way. Anyway, this is my system, so I can observe, you gotta read this upside down, 0 0.015 microfarads. 0 0.01 will work just fine. In fact, it's usually what I see on a volume pot anyway, so I get my snippers. I pull off one side, and then I get my new cap here. And what I generally try to do is eyeball it and figure out how long do I want my leads. And you want them as short as possible to get to where you're going. And over time, over the years, you just get to a point where you can just kind of look at it and know how long to make it. Kind of a big mistake that some early folks do when they get into this hobby. Is they'll make their leads way too long. <clears throat> and there can be some RF interference. And then I make a, like a hook between the two. Whoops, my uh, soldering iron is not on. But luckily it's a Metcal and it'll warm up instantly. By the way, if uh, you do this all the time like I do, Metcal soldering stations, they're a little spendy. You can buy them used. They're worth every damn penny. It's like using a fine pin versus a big honking soldering iron. So we got one end clipped. And so I'll get the other end. I almost clipped the wrong thing. You really got to pay attention to what you're doing. And then I can just kind of hold it up here and figure, well, I just need a little bit of extra for my hook that I'm going to make on the other end. 
I'm going to use a, a small pair of needle nose pliers because you want to make a physical as well as molten connection. So we've made a good, strong physical connection. And then the solder will essentially glue it all together. Sometimes if you're not sure of how well of a soldering joint you made, it doesn't hurt to tug on it. And that's good. So let's see, what other caps do we have to replace? We have this one right above it. And sometimes you have to either clip or twist the cap so you can see where the value is. And what is this? Uh-oh. Point, point zero 0.01. Okay. And because I don't want to lose my place, I'm going to mark where the other side went since I had to cut it a little close. So, then I'll come up on my handy dandy parts bin, grab out another 0 .01 rated capacitor. I want to tell you something that's kind of funny though, which is, one of my friends gave me a, where did it go? I must have not brought it back over here. He gave me a test testing tool where you just can plug anything into it, and it'll you tell you the value of capacitors, like what's their capacitance, resistors, resistors, moffets, all that stuff. It'll be able to spit out like its value. So I was curious, and yesterday I was working on a Packard Bell radio and decided to test the capacitors that were coming out of it. What I found was that in reality, the values of a lot of the caps that were in the set, even though it actually still worked, were way off, as in I had one cap that was supposed to have been a tenth of a microfarad, and it was reading like 140 picofarads or something ridiculous like that. Yet the set still worked, so I get a feeling these guys are not super, well, I, I wouldn't call these finely crafted, highly precise pieces of engineering. You can just about throw anything at them and they'll still work. All right. Should we keep going? Let's do one more. Why not? What is this guy? What is this guy here? Ugh, all these are dirty. What does that say? 0 0.035. I don't have any 0.03s anymore. I think I've got 0.047s, which is fine. Like I said, I'm running out of parts. I'm having to start using some of my big ugly orange drops, which I don't like, but I'm going to have to use them if I'm going to complete this project. And again, we get one end of the cap, and then we'll make sure you wear your glasses or goggles if you're clipping your leads like that, because you heard that guy fly across the room just now. I've shot myself in the face with these things, and luckily because I wear glasses, it didn't do anything, but... As someone who's gotten metal in their eye before, you do not want to do that. That going to the emergency room is not fun. <laughs> I used to uh, have a an even dumber hobby than this one, which was I used to race riding mowers. At one point, I had a, a riding mower, which is if you're across the pond, it's more like a small tractor for mowing your lawn, your lawn, a garden tractor. I had one that would go about 50 miles an hour, and so I did a lot of welding. And one day I was welding something, and even though I was wearing safety goggles and everything, I was doing some cleanup with the wire wheel, and one of those wire wheels shot in my eye somehow. I wound up having to go to the emergency room. So, protect your eyes. Anyway, that's all I'm going to show, because otherwise it's going to be boring, but you get the idea. Um, I'll continue doing that until all of the capacitors are replaced and then we're going to do a test, a safety test and possible realignment because sometimes when you change values like this guy with something more extreme you can throw your alignment out of whack or it may work fine. You'll never know until you get the cap job redone. I just wanted to make a case in point here so I'm testing a .05 rated cap. Oh, the screen just went off. And what does it measure? 128 nanofarads. That is way, 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 way off. Looks like the ESR is way off too. And then again, the radio functioned with these guys. 
not exactly doing their jobs anymore. Anyway, we've got almost all of them replaced except for that guy, which is the safety cap. So I'll replace that and then we'll give the set a whirl to make sure it still works. Okay, now it's time to try the radio again and see if it still works. I need to clean the volume switch. It's a little difficult to turn on. No biggie. We got pilot light going. The tubes are dirty. I can hardly see the filaments. Oh, there we go. listening to that that's kind of in my neck of the woods where all the floodings happening at least kind of in the neck of the woods that I grew up in uh, so if there's anyone listening in um, Kentucky um, guys take care I know that uh, it's not a good situation with all that flooding stay safe if you're told to evacuate please do so okay um, I'm going to proceed to lubricate and clean the volume control. Unfortunately, it's one of these volume controls where everything's all sealed up. I find in the, the best way to deal with it is just to soak the living snot out of all of it. And then what will happen is it'll soak into the volume pot. I'm going to get the shaft too. In fact, now is the time to get up my handy dandy zoom spout oil. Kyle was the person that kind of told me about this stuff and it's pretty great I don't know what petroleum products it's made of but it seems to work real well I just use it on everything that moves like that tuning shaft I still got the set plugged in let me see if this improves the yeah that why does that make an annoying noise like that see if I can get more juice in there Oh well, it's not like someone is going to sit here and be like, oh boy. They're just going to turn it up a little bit and then it'll be set. So likewise, we will take the zoom spout oil and apply it to the bearing of the tuning condenser. There's one in the front, one in the back, and one in the, kind of in the middle like that. Then we'll also put a little scotch on all the pulleys. I mean, do you have to do this? Probably not. It just makes it feel a little bit better when the user twists the knob. Let's see how that how that feels now. Oh, that's like loads better. What I also do is I'll just put a little bit on my finger and just get the top where the indicator rides. We'll wipe that excess oil oil off, but I'm just All right, that's already feeling a lot better. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the tube sockets and the tubes. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a minute, because after that it's going to be time to do a safety test, of which I think this guy will fail, and I think I know why. Okay, now it's time to do the safety test. I have this running through a multimeter set for 2 volts AC. Maximum threshold that we use is around 6 tenths of a volt, which in my opinion is pretty low, but whatever, it's not my decision. Uh, let's go ahead and plug in the rig, the safety rig. That's lit, so let's go ahead and fire it up. It is on. And I'm going to touch my probe and see what we got here. 0.379. You won't know how it's really going to do until you warm it up all the way. And we're over the threshold. Yeah, it's climbing. Well, it's not quite a volt. Is that great? No, it's not great, but it's not horrific. Or if you, just a few ticks of a volt up, and I think I know what I need to do to fix this. 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see if I have any glass versions of 12SK7 or 12SQ7. Actually, I think if this has a 12SA7, that's usually the tube that what we find is if it's a metal tube, the case can itself cause a ground problem. Um, and the reason I say that is because what they were doing in some of these sets is they would ground the grid, which I believe on these tubes, the RF tubes, are pins number one. So let me dig around in my supplies and see if I have a glass 12SA7, which I doubt. If not, we'll do plan B. Okay, welcome back to hopefully the last day of this episode. I was able to finally get it to pass safety, but I had to clip all of the... Uh, the grid grounds off of these tubes and it worked without them except for this one I had to add a <clears throat> off the 12 SA7 I had to add a 0 .001 cap uh, from grid to chassis ground so now what I'm going to do is add the oh so famous audio input I always talk about this set actually did come with an RCA input but we're not going to go through that and plus I removed that out of the circuit is where I don't, I don't want someone to plug anything into that and have any chance of having any kind of current on it. So right now it's removed from the circuit. So what we're going to do instead is run audio through this, which is an isolation transformer. Think of it just like a wall wart. Functions the same way. If you have 120 going in, 12 volts going out. The primary is this side. This is the secondary side. Primary is going to go to either end of the volume pot. And what I mean by that is there are three legs on it. There's one buried under here, this one, and this one. And so we're going to go in through the top of the volume pot, which is where our incoming radio signal comes from. <clears throat> you can tell it's this one because we have a this yellow wire going to the underside of one of the RF transformers, so that's a dead giveaway. Uh, the other one is going, the bottom should be going to some sort of ground. So it goes here, 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 there. And that jumps over to here, and that's that's main B plus ground. So yeah, that's a good indicator. That is indeed the neg negative or the bottom of the pot. That's where the other side of the isolation transformer will go. And we're going to run an audio signal through the secondary of this isolation transformer. Since we'll have stereo coming in through this cable, we want to tie the right and left channels together through a pair of these resistors. I think these are like a hundred and something on resistors. It's not super critical. And then on the primary side, we want to have these running in um, series. And what this is going to do on the, coming to the top of the volume pot is preserve the set's automatic gain feature, or AGC system. We found that out the hard way that these guys, if they're left in circuit, even if you, you know, switch, to switch the switch off and on, it's going to interfere with that and make the, the uh, radio sound a little bit funny. So, And we're going to glue this to the inside somewhere here, probably around there, because, oh Jesus, I almost <laughs> threw it. There's no real room to mount it here. And you want to get it as close as you can to the volume control, so this is probably going to have to be it. It's kind of a shame, but whatever. And we'll use some, uh, I use Gorilla Super Glue to glue it on there. I want to make sure the surfaces are really clean. Don't have any grease or anything. And we rough it up a little bit so we get a good adhesion. And then we're going to have a wire that's going to clip the signal from this wire going to the volume control. That's our radio signal. We want to be able to turn that off and on so that if someone wants to listen to the radio, they turn the switch in the back one way. If they want to listen to only audio coming through, they flip the switch the other way. Cuts the uh, radio signal to the volume control. So it's pretty basic. not much to it. Uh, but this is due to uh, wanting us to make sure that the user is absolutely safe from any potential incoming current or outgoing current. Um, it'll basically null any sort of current that'll get to this end, which is the audio plug. All right, so now we have the system installed. We have our switch wire. A few splices I'll cover up with a little insulation. Nothing that's really going to touch anything. That's fine. I'll put a little scotch on that. Uh, so we've got the switch wire. The switch is not installed, but so that means AM is effectively temporarily disconnected. We have our isolation transformer mounted here. And what I do is I cut an oversized hole for the cord, and I tie a knot, and I fill 
just the front and back with glue to make sure that this is not going to chafe or pull out. So right now I've got a Bluetooth running through it. That's sounding good. And you know, I'm going to be trimming a lot more of this wire so that'll improve the sound quality even more. What I tend to do, excuse me, what I tend to do, and I'm not going to show because it looks ugly, is when I get ready to button up, I do cover this, all the contacts here with glue. That is, you know, if this thing gets dropped or somehow, some way this comes loose, if it's going to bang around on the side, I want all of its connections to be in, basically insulated. Never had it happen yet, but, you know, I'm just, I'm OCD about that stuff. So with that, let's do some final touches and uh, put this thing back in the case. Okay, so she's all done and put back together again. I think I might do a little more detailing work. There's a little switch we can flip off and on when we want to adjust whether we have Bluetooth running through it or not, which I do right now. Likewise, I want to listen to the radio. All you have to do is disconnect the Bluetooth, slip a little switch in the back, and we should get radio. Theblanks.com or call 855. <laughs> The fourth star from mystery. So we'll be free. Hair day going on, but hair, I digress. I can talk about It's a pretty sensitive radio. Then again, it's got six tubes. Anyway, I could probably let it sit here and marinate in its heat for a little while. I'll usually use these throughout the week, maybe off and on a few hours, just to make sure everything's going to work in it. But pretty solid. I think it'll be fine. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, I can try to answer them in the comment section down below and there's plenty more radios coming on the way so don't you worry plenty more to come all right guys until the next time a radio comes across the workbench see you guys next time adios